What's good? This is Master Ace from Brooklyn, New York. Here with my peoples at Breaking Records Radio. Real hip hop will live forever. What's up? This is Damrick. It's Jamie Madrock. Man, this is your man, it's Obi Trice. This is Adlib. Yo, what up? This is Specs One. This is Fresh K. Hot Rock's the motherfucking Sklan MC. Breaking Records. Breaking Records Radio out here. This is Breaking Records Radio. Check them out. That's insane. And then, um, I mean, to move forward from that, too, because I know you've talked about, you know, your, your affiliation with Juice Cream and stuff a million times. So we'll, we'll move forward from there. But one thing I was curious is in an interview, I think it was when you're talking about um, the sitting on Chrome 20 year anniversary. But you said, like, when you signed with Delicious, because it's, yeah, it would have been Delicious at that point, right? But uh, you were arguing with them and you wanted to change your name because uh, you were tagging Ace One at the time and stuff. And you, you the way you worded it was, I, wa I didn't want... I can't remember specifically how you were. Basically, you didn't want the relation to the old masters. I don't want any affiliation with yeah. I don't want any affiliation crew with, you. with Cold Chilling. Cold Chilling you with that label because you know that label had really done done wrong by myself and a lot of other artists. And I felt like that first album, Take a Look Around, was phase one of my career. And now this is phase two, and I don't want anybody to even remember phase one. Yeah. I wanted to just go with a clean slate. I wanted to start with a clean slate. That's what it was. And what, like, what was it over at Cold Chin? Just like the same things other people complain about, not getting paid properly, the royalties, yeah, all that like, stuff? All that stuff, man. It was just with, like they didn't run, if they had run their label the right way and taken care of their artists in the right way, you know, they could have really flourished as a label. They could have been like a Def Jam. They would have been. I mean, they yeah. were, at, at that time, you know, late 80s, Cold Chillin and Def Jam were 1 and 1A. Like they were literally neck and neck. Yeah. Competing for radio slots and, and, and airplay and... Both labels had big name artists, you know. Def Jam had LL Cool J, Run DMC. I mean, not even Run DMC. I'm sorry, LL Cool J, and uh, I forget what the other Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys, whatever. yeah. And Public Coach, Enemy by '86, yeah. PD, right. And, and Cold Chillin had Big Daddy Kane, Biz Marquee, MC Shan. Yeah. So they were really neck and neck with Def Jam, but the difference is that Def Jam took care of their artists. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you'll get some Def Jam artists that'll say they didn't want, you know, but whatever they were getting jerked. Whatever way they might have been getting jerked, we were getting jerked way worse. Way worse. Like they weren't. They weren't. They were not even accounting to us. Like, and and to this day, I haven't been accounted to for my first album. Really? Eh? And uh, yeah, it's been it's been almost three decades. And I and I've heard a lot of. I've heard the same sentiment from a lot of people. Like Shan said the same thing when I was talking to him, and you know, even just in all the interviews I've watched with other people, and um, you know, it's a shame, man, because there's a lot of classic material, and really, it's like. For all these artists to be at this point and they still haven't like, you're right. Like it's that's um, it's disappointing, really. Those are bad choices by, you know, Tyrone Williams and Lenny Fischelberg. They were the two heads of the label, the president and the CEO, and you know they didn't. Uh, they did, they they looked at all the money that was coming in. They looked at that as their money. Yeah. And so they were they were out. Living the living the big life, champagnes, parties, limousines, yachts, you know, like literally, like, like that, like, eh? like that. Wow. Like like literally spending all this money up that was supposed to be for artists and for their budgets. And you guys are still taking the train and shit to come to the studio. I know Charte was taking the train up until like her first album came out. And her, <sighs> she was like, "How am I taking the train with a with a one year old and everybody else is and and Molly and." Fly tight, these guys all got brand new cars, and I'm, yeah. and I'm taking the train. It doesn't make sense. So, like, what would they do that back then? Like, do, did they just break you off, like, what, like, kind of, like, similar, like, uh, what people say Shug was doing at Death Row, like, just break you off, like, allowances and stuff when you yeah. kind of ask for money? And Everybody, it, it, well, the only people that were on uh, that stipend thing was, yeah. was Shan and Shantae. Okay. They were on a stipend. They came up every week, every single week, and Shan got a check for $1,500 or whatever it was. Um... And with me, once I kind of saw, oh, oh, you can do that? Yeah. Then I had like maybe one or two occasions where I was low on cash and I would call and he's like, yeah, come up. And they would come up and just write me a check for 1500 just to send me on my way. Yeah, keep you quiet for a bit. Yeah, yeah, send me on my way. But there was no accounting. So I didn't know what I was, I probably was owed five times that. Yeah. And so, that's just how it was, man. And uh, like I said, I just I didn't want any affiliation with that time in my career. Yeah, I was ready to start fresh with a whole new uh, energy, a whole new 
you know, a whole new me. So that's why I did that. Yeah, no doubt now. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I guess that's that same reason why Shan says, too, he's like, I wasn't going to no symphony session. He's like, I wasn't getting paid for these records. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yo, what's up? It's your man, MLNY Maloney, Breaking Records, Breaking Records Radio. You know what it is. I'm just here to tell you guys right now that you want to, if any of my smokers out there, basically, any of my Canadian smokers, now that it's legal, what you got to do is you got to head over to thccollection.com and check them out. And make sure you use the promo code HIPHOP. That's H-I-P-H-O-P. And that's all capital letters. Save 10% on every purchase that you make. Anytime they got everything, they got deals every single day of the week, which include like free whatever with whatever you buy. And uh, my favorite is Tulip Tuesday. You can get one hundred dollar ounces, and that's only on Tuesdays. And you save ten percent on every purchase with the promo code Hip Hop, all caps. That's H I P H O P. So make sure you go over there, check them out. That's thccollection.com for all your good medical needs, for all your good. Gr- greenery, your extracts, and all that good stuff.